As the weather is getting colder, my patients are suffering from their Raynaud's again. But it's not just when you're cold, it also comes on sometimes when you're stressed and anxious. But I wanted to create this video for you to understand what Raynaud's is about, how to avoid it, how to actually treat it, and give you the know-how about this really common phenomenon. So Raynaud's is a condition where if we take your hands as an example, although it can happen elsewhere, such as your toes, your nipples, your nose, the blood supply that is going to those extremities, the vessels can go into temporary spasm, restricting the blood flow to that particular area, causing not only the color to change, but you to get some sensory changes. So pain, but also like tingling and numbness within that area. And it can take a little while for the spasm to settle, the blood flow to go back to normal and for that pain to recede. These are the three things that I want you to do to help prevent your Raynaud's from appearing so much this winter and also that if you do get it, that it's not so bad. Now the cold is one of the most common triggers for the hands and feet to get this Raynaud's phenomenon. So it's really important to keep them warm. You can do that by simply wearing gloves, but also things like hand warmers that you can have in your palms to keep your hands and fingers warm. And if you suffer from it in terms of your feet, you can also get socks that have like these batteries that you can switch on when you're outside and it's really cold and it keeps your feet nice and warm. Number two, if you are smoking, I want you to stop. It is well known that smoking can cause circulatory problems because it can cause build up in your blood vessels and make it difficult for the blood to reach those areas. So if you're suffering from Raynaud's on top of this, smoking is just going to make everything worse. And one way that you can not only improve your health in general, but also prevent your Raynaud's from being so severe is just stopping smoking. Number three is to exercise regularly. And whenever I say this, it can be a bit of a ugh, situation because when you think of exercise, I don't want you to think of a situation where you have to get really hot and sweaty and bothered and sort of have to sort of change your clothes and shower like twice a day. It's exercise that is enough to increase your heart rate. Um, so it can be something you really enjoy doing, something really simple such as just walking, Pilates, anything to really get that blood pumping through your body because it's really going to help with your circulation, but also reduce your stress levels, which is one of the other triggers for Raynaud's. So these are the three things I don't want you to do. Going from extreme temperatures. So if you are having a Raynaud's attack where your fingers have gone white, they're quite painful, I don't want you to go and turn on the hot water and run your finger under it or put it against a radiator. That sudden change in temperature can actually make those vessels go into further spasm and make the pain a lot worse for you. So the best thing to do is probably to warm up your hands sort of in between your legs or put them on a very warm surface, such as a warm hot water bottle. Number two, is to not handle sharp objects when you're having a Raynaud's attack as such, because your sensation is going to be altered. You will find that your extremities feel numb, and so it's going to be difficult for you to notice any sort of cuts and serious injuries. So when you are feeling this way, it's not the time to chop your vegetables and so on. Let your hands settle and then get on with cooking. And number three, try to reduce the number of caffeinated drinks you're having. So the caffeine can make our heart rate go really fast and just cause more stress on the body and can worsen your Raynaud's phenomenon. See if having less coffee and tea in the day in addition to things like dark chocolates are affecting your Raynaud's. And if they are, you know that this is one of the things you can focus on reducing. Now, most people have what we call primary Raynaud's and this is where Raynaud's is there for no other reason apart from the fact that it's happened and there's no real cause for it. Whereas there's something called secondary Raynaud's and this is where it's as a result of something else such as medications, medical problems, or treatments. And we usually suspect this if you've suddenly developed Raynaud's um, after your 30s, if you experience very severe pain when you get this Raynaud's attack, and if you notice that with Raynaud's only one side of your body is affected. This might give us some clues that actually the Raynaud's can be caused by something else. But these are quite rare and the best thing to do is to talk to your doctor who will one, examine you, but also send you for some blood tests to check if you're positive for any of these other conditions. 
symptoms. And if your symptoms are really bothersome and you feel like they're affecting your quality of life, then it might be worth discussing it with your doctor to think about medications. So one of the medications we have in our doctor's box of things we can use is a medication called nifedipine. This is a calcium channel blocker that helps with widening the blood vessels so that when they do go into spasm they don't restrict the blood flow as much as they would and it reduces the symptoms that you get from Raynaud's. Now in very very rare situations Raynaud's can be treated with surgery. This is where it's a very intricate operation that involves cutting one of the nerves that supply the blood vessels and cause them to constrict. But this is usually reserved for very severe cases. So that's all about your Raynaud's, the triggers, what to do, what not to do, when to seek help from your doctor, and just a few options if you think that it's really affecting your quality of life. Don't forget to subscribe before you click off from this video and I hope to see you in another one. Bye.